morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome primary students to another Sabbath school. This is the Sabbath school lesson for, for April 11. So welcome and I hope you enjoy our lesson study today. Let's start with what we're thankful for. So I'm thankful that the snow is starting to melt because I'm really anxious for spring. I'm anxious to see green grass and some flowers and tree buds. So I'm thankful that the snow is starting to melt. Let your moms and dads know what you're thankful for. If you're watching with brothers or sisters, let them know what you're thankful for today. All right. And thank you for your prayer requests this past week. Liam and Logan, I hope your grandma had a special birthday. Thank you for that request. And um, any new requests, you can text me at this number, 250-788-5339. All right, let's bow our heads to start. Dear Jesus, thank you for Sabbath. Thank you so much for new lessons in the Bible. Thank you for each boy and girl out there that's watching today please be very special to um, be very close to them on sabbath today and with their families thank you for loving us always and thank you for a day to come together through the internet to worship you in your name amen all right so offering time by now you have a jar at home, maybe with some offering from the past few weeks. You can add some offering to your jar and save it up for when we can meet at church again. And remember our mission, we're looking at this week, they're looking at um, a youth community center way up in northern Norway in Sortland. And that's where a little girl who is six, whose name is Osni, lives. And at their church, there's only 16 people that go to their church. And so they are really hoping that by building a youth community center that they will draw in more people that will come together to learn about God. And Osni, even though she's pretty little, she's only six, she believes that God answers prayers because even when there were prayers about small things. Because one day she had lost her headband, and it was a very special headband with two roses on it. And she needed to wear that one day. She couldn't find it, and she looked and looked, um, couldn't find it. Then she remembered that she could pray, and, and maybe God would help her find it. So she, she did pray, and she had had looked everywhere and when she finished praying she went back to the couch where she had looked and there right sitting on a cushion in plain sight was her headband. She doesn't know how it got there, maybe mom found it and put it there, but Osni, she says, I believe in God. He answers my, my little prayer requests for even small things. So you know what? God can answer our prayers. Sometimes he answers them pretty dramatically like he did for this little girl. And sometimes um, he doesn't answer our prayers the way we want them answered. But you know what? It's still important to pray to God because he hears you and he really cares about what you care about. So let's remember that with our mission story today. All right. So our lesson story today is on the way to Calvary, and our message is, we can help others carry their burdens. So let's, let's find out about that story today. So I just have a couple props here. All right, so it might look kind of scary, I don't know. Okay, all right, so our story is about Simon. This is a story of a man named Simon, so I'll be Simon today, all right? Simon was from a country far away from Jerusalem, a country in Africa named Cyrene. 
As he entered the city, Simon heard a group of people passing nearby. They were so noisy. He thought he should stop and stay out of their way. He pressed up as tight as he could to the wall, hoping no one would notice him. There were people crying and shouting, and in the middle of the group he saw, could it be? It was too horrible. He covered his eyes from the sight. He didn't want to look. But a soldier was pulling on his sleeve. When Simon opened his eyes, he saw the bloodied man lying on the street. The huge wooden cross he had been carrying lay on the street beside him. It was smeared with blood from the man's back. Simon looked again at the person pulling on his sleeve. Seeing it was a Roman soldier, he shrank back. But when the soldier shoved Simon into the middle of the street and shouted, Carry the cross! Simon couldn't say no. The law said he had to. He might have wanted to say, but I was just passing through town. I don't live here. But he felt sorry for the beaten man. Suddenly, it didn't matter how little time he had. It didn't matter what the soldier forced him to do. It didn't matter that the cross was heavy or bloody. It didn't matter what business had brought him to, into town. Simon saw that someone needed him and he wanted to help. He knew he couldn't stop this execution, but he could make this man's last few hours a little less painful. So Simon lifted up the cross. He balanced it on his back and he followed Jesus in a slow walk to the hill where Jesus would die. The crowd followed behind. Simon served Jesus by carrying the cross on which Jesus would die. How can we help Jesus too? Can you serve him by helping others with their burdens? That's what Jesus wants us to do. Why do you think nobody offered to help Jesus carry the cross? We don't see crosses today, but you've all seen pictures and we've read stories, haven't we? Yeah, and those crosses, they're big and heavy, and Jesus would have been bleeding on the cross. That was a big job to do, and it would be frightening. What if those soldiers started hitting you while you were carrying the cross? Simon's story is very short. There's only a couple verses about him in the Bible. And he had never met Jesus before, we're told, but he knew about him, and his sons knew Jesus. Do you think Jesus was grateful for what Simon did for him? Do you think Simon was happy to do this for Jesus? Well, he may not have been happy to do it, but he did it. And so I think he was glad that he was able to help Jesus. It took only a short time, but what a huge burden was lifted from Jesus' shoulders. And there is a verse in Matthew 16, verse 24, and I want to read that to you. It says, and then, and Jesus said this to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Okay, so what did Jesus mean when he said, take up your cross? I don't think he meant a real actual cross like Simon carried for him. He meant that his true followers, so people who truly loved him, 
would always be looking for ways to do his work, to help someone. What have you learned about helping others from Simon's example of unselfishness? Have you learned that it's important to help others? By helping others, we are helping Jesus. By helping others with their burdens, we are helping Jesus, aren't we? And that's what he wants us to do. Our message today is we can help others carry their burdens. All right. So, to help us with our memory verse today, which is, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.2. Now, Galatians is in the books that Paul wrote. So in our New Testament, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then we start having all the books that are under the category of Paul's epistles. So we have Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and then Galatians. So that's the book you want to look for. Galatians 6, verse 2. And I want to read it to you also from the International Children's Bible. And it says, Help each other with your troubles. When you do this, you truly obey the law of Christ. Help each other with your troubles. That is the message that Jesus wants for us today. So, to do our memory verse, I want you to look around your house. I'm going to set some things out on my table. And I want you at home to see if you can find... Okay, sorry, we had to restart the camera after 12 minutes. So I'm not sure um, where it cut off, but we're looking for heavy things at home. So if you can find a big pot, if you can dust off maybe a big book like this dictionary, I had to dust it off. I haven't used it for so long. Dylan didn't even think we had a dictionary. He's never had to use one. He just uses the internet, I guess. So we have a pot, a big book, maybe a candle, nice big heavy candle, and a full water bottle. And you might even have a bag of rice or beans at home. Some big heavy things that are at home. So take a minute, get all those things lined up, and then come back. All right, so, oh, I forgot to tell you, the other thing I need you to go get is a pillowcase. So ask your mom if you can borrow a pretty sturdy pillowcase. All right, so we need that for our, what we're going to do. So these big heavy things have our memory verse on them. All right, my pot has carry each other's and the book burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6.2. If you want, you can write the verses of the memory verse on pieces of paper and stick them on your big items. And then, what I want you to do is stick those items into your sturdy pillowcase. So, get those big items into that pillowcase. Wow, that heart barely fits, alright. And we've got our big old heavy dictionary and a heavy candle and our water bottle and finally our bag of rice with our verse Galatians 6 2. Carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now Here's the challenge. Once you have all of those heavy things in, see if you can lift them up. Sling them over your shoulder 
and carry them around your house for a while. Carry each other's burdens. That is what Jesus wants us to do. So this, mem this can help you remember our memory verse, can't it? So that is a big, heavy sack of burdens. Oh, better set it up here so it doesn't fall. So now we often think of burdens only as things we carry in our arms or over our shoulders, like that bag of stuff. But when our memory verse talks about bearing one another's burdens, it also means helping people carry hurts, fears, and hard things they have to deal with. Sometimes these aren't, are things you can't see or touch, but you can feel in your heart. How can we carry someone's burden today? So if someone's feelings have been hurt because a friend said they didn't like them anymore, how can we help? How can we help carry that burden? If someone is new to school and they're scared, how can we help carry that burden? And if someone is sad because their pet died, how can we help with that burden? And if someone is worried because their grandma or grandpa is very sick, how can we help with that burden? How can we help carry the burdens of our friends and our family? I think you guys probably have lots of good answers. You can be a friend. You can say nice things to each other. You can ask someone to come over and play with you. Or you can call them on the phone and encourage them. There's lots of things that you can do that help carry the burden of, of someone. And our challenge last week to call somebody who might be alone, that is also carrying a burden. You're helping to carry the burden of someone who's lonely. So I hope you were able to do that challenge last week. All right, our message is we can help others carry their burdens. Now the last thing that we're going to do today is we're going to make a cross. We're going to make a, a cross that we can carry. Either you can carry it with, in, with your hand or put it on your doorknob so you can see it. Or you can make the string longer so it fits around your neck. And on this cross we are going to write carry each other's burdens. So just like I wrote up here, carry each other's burdens. The things that you need are two craft sticks, some yarn about 30 inches, and a marker. So you can do this without any glue or anything. If you take your yarn and you make a cross like this, like this, find kind of the middle of your um, string and just loop it over the top and then you can start wrapping one side and then wrapping the other side a few times and then turn it over, tie a knot so that it stays on a pretty tight knot there. Oops, tying a bow. I think I want a knot. Okay. There's a knot. And then you can tie these pieces together to form a loop so that you can carry this cross. All right, so there is the cross that you've made with just some popsicle sticks or craft sticks. These are tongue depressors. And you can write on your cross, just like I did, carry each other's burdens. The words are up here if you need to see them. All right, and that can be our reminder. This weekend is Easter, and we are, we always learn a bit more about when Jesus died on the cross at Easter time. And he died to ultimately carry all of our burdens. So we can help him, we can show our love to him by helping 
carry the burdens of others around us, our, our brothers or sisters, our moms or dads, and even our friends, even though we can't be close by them, we can keep in touch with them, and we can pray with them, and we can talk to them over the phone. Um, maybe we can even FaceTime them and sing songs together or tell jokes or something. There's lots of things that we can do to carry each other's burdens. So thank you for watching today. Hope you have a wonderful week. Miss you all. Let's just close with prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for the lesson today um, on the way to the cross. Thank you for the reminder that you want us to serve you by carrying the burdens of those around us. And thank you, thank you for dying on the cross for us, carrying the burdens of sin that, so that we can someday be with you in heaven. And we just look forward to that day so much. In your wonderful name, amen. Bye. See you next Sabbath.